Joining me now from Washington is Mohammed Ali Abdallah, a senior advisor on U.S. affairs to the Libyan government of national accord. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Uh, you'll, of course, also be aware, though we haven't mentioned it so far, that uh, Turkey's president actually spoke uh, to Donald Trump and said that Turkey's engagement in Libya was viewed as generally positive by uh, the President of the United States. So I have to ask you, where do you see potential U.S.-Turkey cooperation going in Libya? I mean, is, is the Trump administration going to be a reliable partner? Uh, good afternoon. Thank you again for having me. I think the, the partnership uh, that the U.S. Uh, is solidifying currently with Turkey uh, and Libya is only one uh, of several partnerships uh, that the U.S. administration has sort of embarked upon to try to rectify and uh, and, and try to correct the, um, the the mistakes that have uh, developed based on the very passive and sometimes even enabling approach that they have had in the past with Khalifa Haftar and some of the countries that have been back in Khalifa Haftar. So I, I think that the relationship, uh, what we see in in the public, is only uh, the, the the tip of the iceberg. I think there's actually a lot more. Uh, going on that will uh, surface eventually or that the outcome will surface eventually. Uh, I think one of the main ones is the collaboration from within the NATO umbrella uh, from a security standpoint, uh, one to ensure that the Russian military presence, which is their ultimate goal in Libya, uh, does not become a reality, and also to uh, try to create an environment uh, enabling a political solution to actually see the light. And one of the main prerequisites for that is to thwart uh, the military threat uh, led by Khalifa Haftar and, and backed by countries such as Russia, UAE, and, and France and others. So th this is a prerequisite for driving toward a solution. The U.S.-Turkey partnership, uh, is, I, I think, is one of the uh, ideal scenarios for us as Libyans to see uh, develop, and we hope that that partnership expands to include other friendly countries, neighboring countries, and countries who actually can be part of the solution. Right. You know, it's fascinating to see as well this relationship uh, between Turkey and Italy uh, develop because... Italy's own EU neighbor, France, has very much been fighting in its own economic interest uh, in Libya against the government of national accord and against, really, the arms embargo. Uh, I, I would assume you don't think France's position is sustainable as such now. I don't think any country that has actually backed Khalifa Haftar in the past can sustain their position unless, I mean, unless they have some very... Uh, uh, further evil um, objectives for their own countries. Uh, I think France uh, made a huge mistake in, in their position in the past. They have their own justifications and they continue to, to express those. We're not too concerned about how they justify the mistake that they made. We're more concerned about how can they correct it. And I think uh, operating from within a, a solidified, unified position within the EU, EU and NATO is a start. Uh, but I think France has a lot more to do to prove their uh, their uh, goodwill and their, and their willingness to be a part of the solution moving forward. I think they definitely can, uh, you know, do a lot more in order to uh, rectify their position. Italy has always, you know, sort of been a very ambiguous uh, position since the start of the attack. Uh, we're very happy to see a more clear position. Uh, their assistance in mo removing mines, for example, is a very positive step, and we appreciate that. And we look forward to expanding this partnership between NATO member countries uh, include, you know, led by Turkey and others, uh, to help us start addressing many, many challenges that we have, including, uh, you know, uh, prosecuting some of the criminals who are carrying out war crimes, uh, addressing that within sanctions uh, against countries and, and individuals who are back in Khalifa Haftar, and Russia is on top of that list. This has to be a unified position, uh, and I think as Libyans, we will not be able to start talking about a viable, sustainable solution without having the backing uh, of such countries. Right. If you do get there, though, when you get when you get that backing and it's clear the path that the GNA is on towards uh, building a new Libya, where do you think that leaves Egypt, the UAE and, and Russia, for that matter? Yeah, I don't know that there's a one size fits all or a broad brush that we can paint everyone. with. I think everybody has a different uh, objective, but I think the main parameter or the principle that we will use is how can these countries participate and add value to the stabilization uh, of Libya and then ultimately to the prosperity of Libya? And I think Egypt has a huge role to play. We cannot see stability in Libya ultimately without having the buy-in of the Egyptian government. Now, will the Egyptian government uh, correct their position and change their behavior 
in order to achieve that? That's, that's a question they have to answer. Other countries, such as UAE, uh, Libyans are not in need for the UAE. As a matter of fact, we are in need for them to disappear from Libya and to back off of Libya. Uh, and, and I think the only thing we will need from them going forward is how can we impose the rule of law and, and hold them accountable for the crimes that they've done and have them pay for uh, these crimes uh, going forward? Because this is the only way that we can ensure that other countries won't go down that path again. Right. Uh, these I mean, countries have to be held accountable. It's interesting that you say uh, Libya was never in need of the UAE um, because they were so indicative of how the Libyan conflict developed. This was indeed a proxy war with too many foreign powers really fighting for their own interests in the country. Do you think Libya is now finally on the path to stop being that proxy war for so many foreign powers? Well, I mean, we're not naive enough to think that we are uh, there yet. We're on the right path. Uh, there are some tangible steps that we are uh, you know, seeing, and that's being quite honestly led by our heroes on the ground who are fighting for this. The front lines is what's dictating this reality pushing back Khalifa Haftar and burying his dream of ultimately becoming the, the new dictator of Libya, that's what's put us in a position to be able to have these discussions. So we have to, you know, call things as they are. That's the first point. The other thing is, unfortunately, countries such as UAE, who had an opportunity to play a positive role and decided to uh, completely ignore the ambitions of the Libyan people and completely ignore how they can be of, of, of a positive value add, uh, and unfortunately, they will have to reap what they sow. And, and, and that's, that's a, uh, a very unfortunate tale to see about a fellow Arab Muslim country. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, you know, we're not uh, going to accept uh, to be a, 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 um, a, 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 a sort of a testing lab for countries who want to uh, carry out their own ambitions or try to settle, settle scores with other countries or other groups uh, on our soil uh, at the cost of Libyan lives. That is not something we will accept from UAE or from anyone. Okay. Muhammad Ali, Abdullah, thank you so much for joining us there from Washington. We appreciate it.